If he were to get spooked while on a cross tie or a um, being tied to a pole or something, uh -huh. when the pressure hits the back of his head or his nose, his reaction is to panic and pull back harder until he breaks free. Okay. I know that because when you put pressure on it, that immediate resistance reaction, that's the same reaction that a pullback will have, only it compounds. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, he just went flying. So he keeps the head down cute. The pressure is coming on the top of the pole and the front of the nose here. And it's hold constant even pressure until not just his head slowly goes down, but he has to physically take his head away from that pressure very intentionally. At first, you use a moderate amount of pressure or a light amount of pressure depending on your horse. You want to get to the point, especially if you're going to teach them to wash their face, that you can put any amount of pressure on at any time and there's no thought to go up. You're teaching this with a horse you don't know or a horse you're unfamiliar with. Make sure you are out of the rear and kick them off to the side. Either you're not very comfortable at all, off to the side here where if they go up, they're going to push you away this direction. Or if you're in front of them, you're still off to the side out of the way of the shoulder to keep yourself across. Because for me, I usually have this arm locked, so if he goes up, he's going to push me out of the way. You got a lead rope. Like, I, I Once they start to get the idea to not resist anymore, I personally like to start putting the pressure on harder and faster to test them. What are they going to do? What's the reaction going to be? I'm usually satisfied in the beginning if they don't do anything at all. If they just stop and then slowly come down, that's usually fine for the first little while. Eventually that'll become straight down. But as long as they don't go up and panic, and they think about it and process it before they act, and I'm happy. Which is not what he did. Which is not what he did. <laughs> <laughs> not what he did. He went the rear up and flip over backwards and all that good stuff. So if you got a horse that's very prone to pull back when they're tied to the trailer or in the cross ties or anything like that, head down cue from various parts in the halter is very, very important to teach. And teach it to the point that you can put any amount of pressure on it. There would have been an instance where he would have usually really started to panic, fly backwards. Good. So basically, now when he pulls and gets that pressure on his head, his response is going to be head down instead right. of freak he out. stops, thinks, and puts his head down. Instead of, oh shoot, panic, I got to get out of this as much as hard as I can. Because they're strong animals, they can pull anything out of the ground. They can, I've seen horses pull a trailer over before when they're panicking. Okay. So now we've started to teach... The uh, head down cue, we can move to actually starting to teach washing the face. Recommend getting at first a some sort of nozzle that you can use a very limited amount of low pressure water. Like this right here is as much as I'd use at first. It's very low pressure, it's nothing, but it's there, it's constant. So if I have a horse that I'm confident in that this won't go horribly, I'll just hold the nose band here. Okay. And I'll try to use my hand to block their nasal cavity mm -hmm. or their nose. Uh, just so the water doesn't go into their nose, they hate that. The big areas that they're going to be scared of are water going in their nose, some of them water in their eyes, but the biggest part is the ears. Mm -hmm. So when you start this, you're always reminding, put your head down, put your head down. And I start here on the chin. I hold the water as close to the horse's body as possible water going down and backwards to the horse make sure you got enough hose so you can control it easily close to the body as possible the reason being is that when he starts moving around if i'm holding this away and mm -hmm. he starts moving around it's more likely that i make a mistake and this goes in his ears and he totally breaks his trust as far as the washing the face goes the biggest thing with washing the face is the ears and if the horse knows that the water is not going to get in his ears They'll submit to washing the face easy, no problems, very quickly. But it's a trust you have to earn, and you earn it through being able to, to ask them to put their head down and making sure that water does not go in their face. So I start on the chin here, this jaw line. I'm constantly asking him to lower his head. We've lost a lot of our head down cue because we're in a pressure situation here, but I'm constantly asking him to lower that head. And I don't go any further until I can lower his head down and move the water. We start here on the chin. The first session is usually the chin up to the point that we get to the eye, 
in the back here. Right there is a big hot spot. They're going to want to put their head up when you come here. Make sure you push the ear out of the way. The water's flowing backwards, and I'm asking the head to go down. All he cares about is don't get that water in my ear. That's really all he cares about. So if I prove to him right here that I'm not going to get the water in his ear, then he'll be fine with it. And again, make sure you're close to the horse's body. If you're far away from the horse's body when you do this, it, it, you're going to make a mistake and it's going to go in his ear and you're going to take 10 steps backwards. So I keep this really close to his face. All the splash of the water goes down and backwards. So Mikey's slowly starting to trust me that this isn't going to go in his ears. We're getting closer and closer to the ear. I'm not having to ask him to put his head down much at all right now. He's keeping it there. He's comfortable. My hand is blocking his nose so it doesn't go in his nose. Mm -hmm. You can see right here, my hand blocks the water from going inside the nose. Mm -hmm. Once he's very comfortable, what he's going to start to do, and they start to do naturally, is they start to lower their head and stick their nose out slightly. Mm -hmm. And that ensures for them that the water doesn't get in their nose. But for now, i got to help him because he doesn't. At the tougher area, it's starting to go up on his forehead. He's asking him to take his nose down a little bit at a time as I wash here. Again, blocking the water from going in the nose. Like he says, oh, this isn't really too difficult. I'm going to start to see if I can move around the top of his ear, down his eye. It's like painting a wall. Mm -hmm. Just cover a new spot. His head goes up. He's just light resistance, asking him to come back down. I'm not creating a wall, but I'm making sure there is obvious resistance to him going up, asking the nose to come down. So you've got pressure on that hand. Yep, pressure on that hand only when the head comes up. So here, I got pressure. I'm holding in the water still, so it's not going anywhere in his ears or his eyes. When he releases that pressure downwards, I'll start moving the water again further down. Sometimes with some horses that they lock up, give and release, give release, give release, or, or pressure release, pressure release, pressure release, just to get them to stop locking a little bit. So mm -hmm. loosening them up a little bit at a time. Good. That's a tough area right there forehead the tough area again my body is out of the kick zone if he were to rear up I'm out of the way and my arm's gonna push me away from his body so we're gonna switch to the other side I'm on a different side now a different brain so I'm just gonna review his head down cue it's not as strong on this side we do the same thing hand is blocking where the water could go in his nose starting at the jaw Always asking him to go down. Again, for him, he's, he's locking up a little bit, so my hand is bumping. Just a little pressure release, pressure release, pressure release, till he loosens that neck up. It's like a little massage, in a way. It's a lot harder for him to keep his muscles tense when he has to tense react, tense react, tense react, tense react. So this helps him a little bit. Good, there. And now he relaxes and comes off my hand really big. Start working up his face a little more. This is something I'm really particular about. I, I hate going to shows and seeing people really struggling with washing their horses' faces or they don't wash their face at all uh, just because it's too much of a wreck. Every horse that I deal with and I'm washing or comes in for training, they learn this day one. I want to be able to do this so I can keep them clean, keep them in good condition. There he goes up. You take the water off, restore the head down cue. He says, ah, oh, but there's water around my eyes. That hurts. It's ugly. I'm scared. Reestablish your head down cue. We lost a little bit of trust from him because he panics. So we're going to start a little slow again. Re-get the head down cue. Start under his eyes. He's pretty good with his eyes and his forehead right now. Just over top of his eyes. Quickly around, comes back. The more times I can get around his eye, and him not die, the more he's going to trust me. So I get around there fairly quickly. He's kind of resisting a little bit on the head down cue. I'm just bobbing him a little bit. Getting that head to go down. Right there. Alright, we're going to go to the middle of the face here. We're pretty much done for that side. He's resisting a little bit here, so I'm going to wait until he ends that resistance and drops his head down. Right there's a little bit, I ask again. Mm 
make sure you don't overcommit on the pressure that you give because if they wait 10, 15, 30 seconds and you're putting 30 pounds of pressure on, you're going to get tired. And he's going to say, I don't have to give because they're getting tired and they're lessening and eventually they're going to quit. He knows, <laughs> these horses know if you got any quitting you, they can wait you out. So the key is just the consistent pressure, the not, consistent the, pressure. Amount not pressure. the amount of pressure. The consistent pressure. Now, if the horse totally gives up and doesn't try anything anymore, he's not resisting, but he's not putting his head down, add a little bit of pressure. Let him make a decision. But if you put too much pressure at first and they resist you and they resist you a lot, then it's really, uh, you overcommit to it and you start to get weaker and weaker and they push through it. You start to work up top a little bit. I'm not asking him, insisting on him being as low as I normally would. Just because I want to get up here, I want him to know he's not going to die. Another thing you can do if you get a lot of trouble up in this area, keep the water right directly on their forehead, lay it right on their forehead, and keep it there with a light pressure until they lower their head down and take the water away. You have, you've got pressure trouble. on your hand? i got a little pressure on my hand, not okay. much. I'm just kind of blocking his nose. Okay. But I'm going to keep this here until he gives his head down and I take the water away. And I put it back on. Good, he puts his head down just for a second. I take the water away. So you always want to reinforce the head down cue when you're done? Always reinforce it. Anytime you have your horse, whether you're leading him, whether he's on the cross ties, anytime you're doing it, reinforce his head down cue. If I'm leading my horse, I'm constantly asking him to lower their head. I'm leading him, I want his head to be low. <laughs> really low. I want to be able to see every single bit of him right here next to me. First thing the horse is going to do when it gets nervous and tense is put his head up. So if I got his head low, I'm going to know very, very early when he's getting tense and he's thinking about doing something. I want to have those alarms, those warning signs, so I can correct this thought before it ever becomes an action. All those parts need to know that cue. Alright, lesson one.